If you want to see how the father could have survived while still saving his kids, stick around to the end of this video. So I checked out A Quiet Place again and noticed some new things you missed that I wanted to share with whoever is out there and still alive and has a pair of headphones. But first, I wanted to address something from the last video, which you should go here and watch before watching this video. I got so many comments saying that the red lights were not meant to hurt the creatures, that they're just a sign to be on red alert because there are aliens in the area or because the baby was being born. I totally agree. That is the purpose of the red lights, and I didn't mean for it to come off in any other way. What I was saying was that when the wife turns on the red lights, there's an unmistakable high-pitched sound emitted from them. Go back and watch the scene, and you'll see what I mean. But I don't know if this is an intended side effect of having the red lights on, or if it was just a happy accident. But it does seem to throw the monsters off by a little bit, providing the family with a long string of continuous sound. Just as the river offered protection from small noises, this, on an even quieter level, may have afforded them a little leeway and needed to move around the house. But other than the volume, another difference between the river and the string of red lights is that the sound coming from the lights is a much higher frequency. And as we saw from the hearing aid, an extremely high frequency sound can hurt the monsters and make them vulnerable. So when I talked about the opening shot of the movie with the traffic light taken down, I was just saying that that could be a clue for the audience as to what the weakness might be. When watching the movie again, I noticed perhaps even more evidence towards this. After the baby is born, when the father comes up from the bunker to find the two older kids, the string lights are now ripped from the ceiling and on the floor. The aliens didn't really attack anything else in the house other than the water pipe, which may have been inadvertent just like the pipe happened to intersect with where the lights were set up. But like I said, the main purpose of those lights was a visual cue for everyone to be on high alert because obviously blasting a siren or something wouldn't work in their favor. There was one other thing in the last video that I got more evidence for the second time around, which was my theory that the creatures are in fact aliens. Remember last time we had this shot, which was used in the trailer but not the movie? This time I noticed a couple more headlines posted up in the father's basement lab. The first read, Meteorite Hits Mexico, which gives us a clue about where and how the epidemic started. If you're wondering where A Quiet Place takes place, there's a newspaper stand in town that says Little Falls, New York. So the family we see in the movie had some time to prepare before the aliens made their way across North America to get to them. There was another headline I caught that was way in the background and partially cut off screen. I saw the letters A-L-I-E, so I'm assuming that says aliens. And I think we've got enough to confirm now that these creatures are extraterrestrials. My question is, what did the father do before the apocalypse that left him so well prepared? I think it's likely he was some kind of telecommunications expert because of all the equipment he has, but he also sets up his own video surveillance and has a printed list of every country. Keep in mind, he would have had to have that list printed before the invasion started because printers are loud. So what do you think he did before the takeover? And why didn't he want his daughter going into the basement? Leave your ideas in the comments. One thing you may or may not have noticed early on that certainly went past me was the seriousness of the opening scene. The family goes into the drugstore to get pills for the older son who is sick. It's pretty scary to think that even a simple cough could be deadly in this world because of the noise. Minor congestion could lead to snoring, which could also be dangerous. That's why the father has medical supplies written on his whiteboard, because staying healthy becomes extremely important. I'm guessing they go into town for supplies fairly often because the father actually lays down a sand path all the way into town to quiet their footsteps. There were a couple other things I noticed that they did to keep things quiet, like painting the floorboards that don't creak a slightly different color. Someone else in the comments talked about the reason the hearing aid bugs out around the aliens. I had previously said that it could be because of a feedback loop, but this person suggested that the aliens might give off some kind of electromagnetic waves that mess with electronics. There seems to be even more evidence for this. When the wife goes into labor, a light bulb above the bath flickers as the alien comes up the stairs. We see the same thing happen in the basement to a smaller lamp. And when the monster goes down near the surveillance screens, they all turn to static. After the creature is killed, they return to normal. I did pick up something very interesting in the early going about the younger son. It almost seems like he doesn't have the will to live quietly. Kids are always loud and obnoxious, and maybe they need to get that energy out by making noise. He draws a rocket ship on the floor of the drugstore and tells his sister, that's how we get away. Then, he intentionally put the batteries back in and turns on the rocket on the bridge. So he essentially uses the rocket to get away from this life that he hates. It's a dark way of looking at it, but after seeing it again, it does look to be intentional. I thought it was strange that they let this kid trail behind the pack like that. I mean, if he were to have wandered off, they would have likely never found him. They wouldn't be able to call out his name when they went searching for him, 
which would make it pretty much impossible to find him. I would have kept the kid in front. And towards the end of the movie, there was something else I would have done differently as well. The dad's last action to save his kids was to yell out and distract the alien, trying to get into the car that the kids were hiding in. Moments before, he grabs an axe from the tool shed and tries to fight the creature off, which doesn't work. I think all he had to do was throw the axe back into the tool shed and aim to knock over some stuff in there. That should have afforded them the time to flee. The other thing I thought about was the fact that the baby is born on day 473 and comes about two weeks early. That means the baby must have been conceived around day 259, almost a year into the invasion. So what does that mean? Aside from probably some really boring, quiet sex, it means they intentionally brought a child into this world, most likely to try to do whatever they could to prevent mankind from dying out. So there may actually be some religious symbolism to match the themes of perpetuating man. The first being that the baby is mentioned to be male. When the nursery is flooded, the baby seems to be floating in that wood box. The image is reminiscent of baby Moses being sent down the river in a wood basket to survive the Israelites. I also found the old couple scene to be significant. The father takes his son to the river to show him how to survive on his own. Then they come across the old couple. The woman is dead and the man gives himself up. This is a symbolic passing of the torch from old to new. The boy experiences a rite of passage and at the end of the movie, he'll be expected to rise up and become the man of the household. And I'm going to refer to the newspapers one more time for another religious connotation. More than one publication refers to the aliens as angels of death or dark angels of destruction which could go back to the idea of the new baby representing Moses and the angel of death passing over him. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, go check out my Things You Missed on Mother, where I go much more in depth about the religious symbolism from Aronofsky's latest flick. Just make sure you stay quiet, stay safe, and stay up to date on my new videos by subscribing to CZ's World for new horrors every week, ring the death bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one, assuming we both survive.